From the capture of Nazi war criminals to the elimination of terrorist masterminds, the Mossad has a long and storied history of clandestine operations. Their methods are often ruthless, but their goals are clear, to protect the Jewish state at any cost. Today, we're uncovering the top 10 deadly assassinations carried out by this enigmatic agency. Let's get started. Number 10, Yehia El Mashad. It's June 13, 1980, in Paris. In a room at the swanky Le Meridian Hotel, something shocking unfolds. Dr. Yahya El Mashad, an important figure in Iraq's nuclear program, is found dead under mysterious circumstances. Now, get this, some say he was beaten to death, while others whisper about multiple stab wounds and a slit throat. The plot thickens when just a few weeks later, a car hits and kills a local prostitute rumored to be linked to Mashad's death. The twist? French investigators have their eyes on the Mossad, Israel's secret service, but they can't pin anything on them due to a lack of evidence. Meanwhile, Israel makes a cryptic comment about Iraq's nuclear program grinding to a halt after Mashad's death, but denies any role in the whole affair. Number 9. Gerald Bull On March 22, 1990, Gerald Bull, a Canadian rocket scientist and weapons expert, meets a chilling fate outside his home in Brussels, Belgium. He's gunned down. Now, why would anyone want to kill a scientist? Well, Bull was no ordinary scientist. He was deep into some serious work for the Iraqi government. Enter the Mossad, Israel's shadowy intelligence agency. The word on the street is that they might have pulled the trigger to stop his work. But wait, there's a twist. Investigative journalist Gordon Thomas says that Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir actually gave the thumbs up for this hit. But Bull wasn't just working with anyone. He was a hot commodity in the world of international defense. This guy was seen as a dangerous liability by some big players and a valuable asset by others. So, the plot thickens with rumors flying left and right. Some say the CIA, MI6, or even the governments of Chile, Syria, Iraq, South Africa, and, of course, Iran and Israel could have been behind it. With so many suspects and no clear answers, the case remains a mystery to this day, with the real culprits still lurking in the shadows. Number 8. Fathi Shakaki. Let's dive into a story that's straight out of a spy thriller. Picture this. Fathi Shakaki, the big brain behind the Palestinian organization Islamic Jihad, meets his end in a dramatic fashion. It's October 26, 1995 and Shakaki is in Slim, Malta, just chilling outside the Diplomat Hotel. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a pair of what many believe to be Mossad agents roll up and shoot him six times. But here's the backstory. Shakaki wasn't just any ordinary guy. He had recently met with none other than Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, who was all in to bankroll Shakaki's operations. Plus, Shakaki had a sit-down with writer Ibrahim Hamidi for an interview with the Al Hayat newspaper. This guy was making waves. Fast forward to November 1st, 1995. His funeral in Damascus was a massive event, drawing a crowd of about 40,000 people. Even to this day, the whole truth behind his assassination is wrapped in layers of mystery. Number 7. Imad Mugnia. It's February 12, 2008, and we're in Damascus, Syria. The place? The Kafr Susa neighborhood. The scene is set for something big. Enter Imad Mugnia, a high-ranking member of Hezbollah. As he's walking by his Mitsubishi Pajero, boom. The car explodes. But this isn't just any car bomb. The twist? The bomb was sneakily planted where the spare tire should have been. Rumor has it that the CIA and Mossad, Israel's elite spy agency, teamed up for this operation. And it was no small feat. They supposedly detonated this bomb remotely. But why Mugnia, you ask? This guy was linked to some major attacks. Think the bombing of the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires in 1992, the 1983 bombings of the U.S. embassy and marine barracks in Beirut, and not to forget the 1996 Kobar Towers explosion in Saudi Arabia. 
His resume was pretty loaded with some heavy stuff. Number six, Mohammed Suleiman, on a summer evening on August 1st, 2008 in Tartus, Syria. Muhammad Suleiman, a top Syrian official and close ally of President Bashar al-Assad, is enjoying a quiet evening. But suddenly, things take a dramatic turn. Suleiman is shot in the head and neck with a silenced weapon. Who's behind this stealthy attack? None other than members of an Israeli military unit believed to be the elite Shayatet 13 Naval Commando Squad. According to leaked NSA documents, these guys pull off the hit and then make a slick getaway by sea. So, why was Suleiman the target? He wasn't just Assad's friend. He was deeply connected to Iran and Hezbollah and played a key role in Syria's Al-Qibar nuclear project. This involvement made him a marked man in certain circles. The most intriguing part? The Syrian government kept a lid on the assassination for four days, maintaining total silence before finally announcing Suleiman's death. If you are already here, then please let us know in the comment section what other subjects you would like us to address in the next videos, and don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. Let's return to the spicy exploration. Number five, is Eldin Sheikh Khalil. Eldin Sheikh Khalil, a key player in Hamas's military wing, finds his fate sealed on September 26, 2004, in Damascus, Syria. The setting? The Al Zahara neighborhood is a quiet part of town. But that day, things were anything but quiet. Khalil is about to start his day when he gets into his white Mitsubishi Pazero SUV, and boom, the vehicle explodes into a fiery ball. The aftermath? Khalil's body is almost completely incinerated, and the explosion wreaks havoc all around. The windows of nearby buildings are shattered, not just on the ground floor, but all the way up to the second story. Three Syrian citizens are injured, and another car's windshield is totally smashed. Nobody officially claims responsibility for this dramatic hit, but it's got all the hallmarks of previous Israeli-led operations, especially considering their vows to target Hamas officials. Number four, Mahmoud al-Mabhu. Let's take a look at a real-life spy saga that unfolded on January 19, 2010. The central figure, Mahmoud al-Mabhu, one of the masterminds behind Hamas's military wing, is Ad-Din al-Qasim brigades. His story dramatically ends in a Dubai hotel room. This guy was on Israel's radar for some serious charges. We're talking about the 1989 abduction and murder of two Israeli soldiers, plus smuggling weapons from Iran for use in Gaza. A group of at least 11 agents believed to be from Mossad, Israel's intelligence agency, are hot on his trail. They're not just any agents. These folks are using fake or fraudulently obtained passports from various Western countries. Talk about going undercover. The operation? It's swift and slick. In just 19 hours, they carry out their mission and vanish from the country. Number three, Iranian nuclear scientists. Between 2010 and 2012, Iran's nuclear program faced a series of shocking setbacks. Key Iranian nuclear experts suddenly find themselves in the crosshairs. While Feridun Abbasi narrowly escapes an assassination attempt, Four others, Masood Ali Mohammadi, Majid Shahriari, Dariosh Rezaina Jad, and Mustafa Ahmadi Roshan, aren't so lucky. The methods used in these assassinations are straight out of a Hollywood blockbuster. Imagine bombs attached to motorcycles and magnetic bombs clamped onto cars. It's like a scene from an action movie, but this is real life. Iran points fingers at Israel accusing them of orchestrating these high-stakes hits to derail their nuclear ambitions. Neither Israel nor the United States confirm or deny their involvement in these incidents. Number two, Abdullah Ahmed Abdullah. It's August 7, 2020, and the streets of Tehran, Iran, are about to witness a scene that seems ripped from an action movie. Abdullah Ahmed Abdullah, known in the shadows as Abu Muhammad al-Masri, is cruising along with his daughter. Out of nowhere, two assassins on a motorcycle zoom in, and bam, Abdullah and his daughter are gone. 
U.S. intelligence insiders, who prefer to stay out of the spotlight, spill the beans that this was an Israeli operation done at the behest of the U.S. But Abdullah's story is a complex one. After being cooped up under house arrest in 2003, he eventually finds himself free in Iran. Iranian and Lebanese media initially spun the tale, saying the victims were a Lebanese history professor and his daughter. Why? It looks like Iran might be trying to cover up Abdullah's assassination. Number 1. Aziz Asbar On August 5, 2018, the world of rocket science takes a dramatic turn. Aziz Asbar, a big name in the Syrian missile program, meets his end in what looks a lot like a hit job. And who's suspected of pulling the strings? None other than Israel's Mossad. Asbar wasn't just any scientist. He was knee-deep in some serious stuff. Think solid fuel rockets, missile manufacturing, and precision-guided missiles. The guy was a key player in Syria's push to amp up its missile game. This wasn't a one-off thing. According to sources, this was at least the fourth time in three years that Israel had targeted a weapons engineer abroad. And Aspar? Mossad had been keeping tabs on him for quite a while. And there you have it, the top 10 deadly assassinations by the Mossad. These stories not only shed light on the Mossad's methods, but also pose questions about morality, justice, and international law. What's your take on these operations? If you enjoyed this exploration into the world of intelligence, remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for more.